So I've been streaming a little bit over on my Twitch recently, and every time I go live, I swear question after question rolls in about my whack keybinds. So today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about keybinds in Rocket League, including everything from why I have my controller keybinds set up the way I do, to arrow left versus normal arrow, and literally anything you could think of when it comes to keybinds. So whenever someone asks again on stream, I can just send them here. <laughs> Nah, in all seriousness guys, keybinds are massive, and I've had to change my keybinds so, so many times to finally figure out what works. And hey, if you're currently watching but are not subbed to the channel, consider subbing. We're on the road to 100k, it's completely free, and you can always unsub whenever you want. But without any further wait, let's talk about keybinds in Rocket League. Okay guys, there are only a few things you need to know to ensure your keybinds are competitively viable. But before we dive into my two main rules for keybinds and how the pros can figure theirs, I wanna quickly tell you how I messed up my keybinds so that we can make sure you don't make the same mistakes I did. You see, for my first 500 hours playing Rocket League, I was actually a keyboard and mouse player. But once I saw all my favorite pros were playing controller, I decided I'd make the switch over. Now, since truthfully, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, I just went out and copied my favorite pros controls, which was Rizzo at the time. But the problem was, I didn't understand the actual why behind it all. And so I decided to copy some things and leave others on default based on just whatever I thought felt good. So what happened was when a few months back, I decided I wanted to finally learn air roll left, I realized that my controls literally would not allow me to do so. There was no way I could fit air roll left in into my previous setup. And so after a thousand hours in the game, I had to do a complete 180 and spend hundreds of hours relearning my keybinds, relearning all that muscle memory from the ground up. But what's my point? What does this have to do with keybinds? Well, in short, it means that you might think your keybinds are great right now, and look, maybe you can do everything you wanna do right now, but two weeks out from now, four weeks out from now, a few months out from now, when you're trying to learn a new mechanic, or scratch that, you need to learn a new mechanic, your keybinds can actually come back to bite you. So what we're gonna do now, to make sure you don't make the same mistakes I did, is go over my two main rules to properly set up your keybinds, and we're gonna talk about what this actually looks like in pro play, and exactly what you should do to make sure your keybinds are in check. All right, to kick it off, the first rule, the first thing you should know about keybinds is that each of your primary inputs in Rocket League should be able to be easily pressed at the same time. And I know that might sound confusing, but this is just to say that the three core Rocket League inputs, which are right jump, drive, and boost, must all have their own keybind and be able to be pressed uh, at the same time. So look, you can't be needing to take your finger off the drive button to move it and go start boosting. Or another example, and this is what I see all the time, you don't wanna have to take your hand off boost to be able to jump, because if you have to let go of one input to click another, your actual speed in game is gonna suffer massively. Okay, so that's the idea, big picture, for what you wanna do when it comes to binding the big three, which are those boost, jump, and actual drive keybinds, right? But what does this actually look like in practice? What do the pros do versus what do I think the average player like you and I should be doing? Well, if we head over to Liquipedia and take a look at the most popular pro binds, what you'll find is a lot of the pros actually don't follow this rule that I'm describing here perfectly. Because if you look at their boost and jump keybinds, what a lot of them do is they put the two right next to each other on their controller. So look, if they have PS4, they'll put boost on circle and jump on X. And let me be clear, this is totally fine to do. I mean, I think the reason a lot of pros do still have it set up this way, even though it's not optimal, is because these are just the default controls, right? A lot of these pros have been playing since launch, and so they just stick to the default controls because it's what they've been doing forever now. But if we go back to what I was getting at earlier, the reason I actually 
don't like the fact that a lot of pros will leave these two binds on default is because look, if you wanna click these two buttons on your controller at the same time, what you have to do is you have to go and kind of spread your thumb across and click both down and sort of fat finger both of those binds at the same time. And while it is possible to click both buttons at the same time, I think if you're just learning the game and you're trying to pick up things like fast aerials, you're actually gonna be making it way harder for yourself to learn aerial mechanics if you have to press both these buttons with the same finger. So what I recommend you do when it comes to the primary keybinds, right, going back to my rule one, is if you want to leave brake and throttle on their standard L2 and R2 keybinds, that's totally fine. I think having those in the back there on the triggers makes perfect sense. But when it comes to boost and jump, what I recommend you do is follow what I do and some of the newer wave pros have done, which is go ahead and put boost on the back of your controller as well on either R1 or L1. This is gonna make it easier for you to press boost, jump, and drive at the same time because you won't have to fat finger two buttons with your thumb. That said, I do get it. Look, if you think you're too far into the game to go back and do a complete 180 on your setup like I did, you can get away with fat fingering some controls and having slightly less optimal keybinds as long as you make sure what I like to call your secondary controls are still in check. So let's move on to rule two and talk about what I mean by that. All right, as I was getting at earlier, rule two is you wanna make sure your secondary controls, this is your air rolls, your power slides, uh, and ball cam even, you wanna make sure with these controls, you can press them at the same time as you press your primary inputs. So for example, all this means is you don't wanna have to say, take your finger off boost to be able to start air rolling. Otherwise, you'll just fall out of the sky anytime you try to air roll midair. Equally, you don't want to have to let go of, say, drive, for example, to start drifting or power sliding. And if you can see where I'm getting here, the list of combinations goes on and on, but you want to make sure that if you had to, you could say power slide, drive, boost, jump, air roll, all very quickly, one after another. But okay, once again, that's a big picture what we want to do with our keybinds. But what does it actually look like in practice? Well, like before, let's go ahead and take a look at pro controls and see what the pros like to do when it comes to these settings. If we take a look at Liquipedia here, what you should start to notice is that when it comes to the secondary controls, there are two major trends that emerge and two real ways that I think you should set this up. Now, if you listened to the advice earlier and you have your boost on the back side of your controller, right, on R1 or L1, this next step is super easy. You just wanna go ahead and bind your power slide or arrow to to the opposite side. So if boost is on R1, power slide and air roll go to L1. And if boost is on L1, power slide and air roll go to R1. Pretty straightforward. However, if you didn't listen to what I said earlier and you're adamant about fat fingering boost and jump, that's okay, but now you're gonna have to make a decision with what you wanna do with your power side and air roll. Whether it's put both of them on the back on R1 or move them both over to L1. And either of them works, but what I stress you don't do is go ahead and bind power side and air roll to another shape over on the right side of your controller. Cause look, the problem becomes if you have all four of these buttons bound on the right side of your controller, your thumb is gonna get overloaded very, very quickly, right? There's just no way functionally you're gonna be able to press all four of these buttons one after the other in any timely manner, unless you're using like a claw grip or something to click them all down at once. But bottom line is, power slide and air roll go to the same button on the back side of your controller. This is great because it gets both of those keybinds away from that cluster of buttons on the right side of your controller that often gets overloaded. This also makes sense functionally because look, you can't air roll and power slide at the same time, right? Air roll happens in the air and power slide happens on the ground. So recoveries become a little easier when you bind these buttons to the same key. And from there, you can go ahead and pick whichever shape or letter, if you're on Xbox, you like best for ball cam. You see, I think it's not as big of a deal to have ball cam clustered over with your other controls because realistically, ball cam is the key bind with the lowest stakes when you're playing. That's not too difficult to manage if you have it clustered around your other binds. So those are the essentials. Hopefully that helps guide you with what you should do, uh, broadly speaking, when it comes to your binds. 
The final thing I need to address though, to make this guide complete, is the dreaded arrow question. In other words, what should you do about arrow left, arrow right, and neutral arrow? What is the best option for most players? And I wanna start by acknowledging that this question is tricky, but I'm gonna try to answer from personal experience uh, and a little bit of reference from what I know about the pros. So for me personally, until about 1200 hours into the game, I didn't have any directional arrow buy. All I used was plain arrow. And currently, I know there are a handful of pros who still do the same. However, what I shifted to using, and this seems most meta right now, is I have that normal arrow button bound, but I also went ahead and bound at least one directional arrow. It seems that what works best, especially with the game becoming more and more mechanical, is having that normal arrow for simple recoveries and small adjustments, but also making sure you have that directional arrow for more complicated aerial maneuvers uh, and car control techniques. And once again, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I can say that personally, when I started training directional arrow, when I started taking this mechanic seriously, my car control went through a complete transformation. And you can literally see this by comparing some of my older videos with my new ones, because the difference in clips is just night and day. Point is though, what I'd say, what I'd recommend, is in order to future-proof your controls, right, to make sure that you have the ability to learn new stuff down the road if you want, I say bind that neutral arrow uh, to the same key as your power side, but also pick up at least one directional arrow. This way, even if you don't use it all that much yet, and trust me, I still really only use arrow left, uh, and very rarely, if ever, touch my arrow right. You will at least have the option to use it later, and you won't be regretting anything down the road. I know a lot of pros still only use normal arrow, and some even don't have the other directional arrow bound, so they'll only have arrow left, uh, or only arrow right. But I can tell you right now that if you make sure you have at least one directional arrow and that neutral arrow, whatever happens, you won't be regretting anything down the road. But fine, I know what you're thinking. Now that I've gone over everything I promised, my last promise was that I'd show you my controls. So without any further ado, I hope this wasn't too anticlimactic for you, but here are my controls. So for me personally, I've got boost on L2, drive forward and backward, controlled by my stick, camera pivot on my right stick, jump on X, ball cam on triangle, power slide and arrow like we talked about on R1, arrow right on R2, and arrow left on square. Now, I can't stress enough that these controls are about as far from the standard as you can find. I admit it, they're kind of whack. But with all that said, they work. Bottom line is, they check out on the rules I laid out above, right? They spread out the most important inputs, all the primary inputs are spread around the controller, and the only secondary and primary inputs that do overlap are buttons that are never really needed to be pressed at the same time. Like ball cam and jump, uh, or jump and arrow left, you never really need to press these buttons at the exact same time. So I'm missing out on very, very little with this controller setup, and I credit most of it to the fact that I have extra keybinds open because I use that analog stick to control almost all my car movement. But at the end of the day, I know these controls are a little bit wacky. So what I don't recommend you do is say, great, awesome video, Luke. I copied all of your controls. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> no, copying my controls to the T might be worse than just staying with whatever controls you're used to now. What I want you to do right now, after watching this video, is take a look at pro controls, take a look at my controls, and try to change as little as possible to address any problem you might face now or in the future to make sure your controls are competitively viable. At the end of the day, you can drive using your joystick, you can drive the normal way, you can do any number of things with your controls and still make it work, so long as you don't commit major violations to the rules I listed above. But I know this is a little bit of a tricky subject, so I want to let you know I tried my best. Hopefully that was helpful, and it gives you a little bit better sense of what direction you should take when it comes to your keybinds. At the end of the day, there's no one set of controls that is best for everyone, but equally, there are some sets of controls that are good for no one. Hopefully this helped you make a set of controls that are at the very least usable in competitive play. If you're interested in getting coached by me, I want to make sure you know my new coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap, is currently accepting applications for our summer launch. 
applications for the spring roster were extremely competitive. We had over 600 people send in apps. So if you want to get in on the summer launch, go down to the description right now and fill out an app as soon as possible to have the best chance of making it to the interview stage with me. But hey, if you have any specific questions, and I'm sure you will after this video, uh, that you want an answer to right away, I actually answer questions and play games live on twitch.tv slash spookluke. So if you want to talk with me directly, go follow me there to be the first notified when I'm live. And believe it or not, my editor editor is currently on vacation, so I edited this one all myself. All I ask is that if you did get value, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. But to those of us who are willing to bite the bullet now, get our binds in order, and set ourselves up for success down the road, to us I say, wins are coming. Cheers guys.